2D cameras are crucial to making any platformer game. Unless of course you're making a game like Pac-Man, Fireboy and Water Girl, or Space Invaders. These games have static cameras, where each sprite is given an X and Y coordinate and is printed to that location on the screen each frame. However, by adding a 2D camera, you are adding a whole nother dimension to your game. You can now track a player or entity, create animated cutscenes, and add a camera shake. Games like Celeste use a combination of these. There are times where the camera is static, following Madeline, or shaking. So how does a 2D camera actually work? In a nutshell, it takes the position and scale of every sprite on the screen and moves it up, down, left or right depending on where the camera is. Then it increases or decreases the scale of the sprite depending on the scale of the camera. The camera is just an illusion, it does not exist. It simply gets the variables of the sprite, does some math calculations with it and pops out its updated values. To understand the math behind it, let's add a square and a circle to the scene. If the camera were to move to the right and increase its x coordinate, the objects go to the left of the screen, decreasing their x coordinate. So if we move the camera in any direction, the objects will always go in the opposite direction of the camera. So we have our first part of the equation. To find the new position, we start with the position of the object. Since the updated position does the opposite of the camera, we get the object position and subtract the camera position. Let's switch to code and test this out. First, I'll create a 20 by 20 grid of pixels scaled up 50 times with 10 pixels between each one. This will be our test to see if the camera is working or not. Next, I'll create the camera class. The purpose of this class is to hold three values the position of the camera, the scale of the camera, and the screen width and height. I'll add two types of methods to this class, the get and set methods and a singleton. The get and set methods are for the position, scale and screen dimensions, and the singleton is to ensure only one instance of the camera exists. There are two ways of doing cameras, having multiple cameras and switching between each one or just having one camera and simply changing its values. We're doing the latter one. If you want me to go over singletons, let me know in the comments. Once the camera is created, we need a method to convert the world coordinates of an object to the screen coordinates. I'll put this in the inline helper. All that needs to be put in here is our previous equation of the object position minus the camera position. The final step is to ensure all entities have these updated coordinates. I talked about entities in another video so check that out if you haven't already. In the entity class, I'll use the new world to screen position method and update the sprite's coordinates. Then let's run the code to test if the camera works. The objects now move up, down, left and right. However, this was the easy part. The hard part is adding a camera scale. This means that if the camera is zoomed out, not only will the object shrink, but it will move closer to the center of the screen. As for zooming in, the object will grow and move away from the center of the screen. So if the camera has a scale of 2, then the object should be 2 times as large. The scale of an object is proportional to the scale of the camera. Let's add this in. In the inline helper class, I'll add a new method called getCameraScale. It simply multiplies the scale of the object by the scale of the camera. Then I'll go to the entity class and update the scale of the sprite to be based off the scale of the camera. Then if we run the code, you'll notice that all entities grow and shrink. However, the position of the sprites still need to be updated. This is our current equation to convert the world position to the screen position. We need to add another equation to this to account for the change in scale. The amount an object changes is dependent on how far away the object is from the camera. If the object is close to the camera, scaling has little effect, but if the object is far away, scaling has a large effect on the position. So let's add the scale multiplied by the distance between the camera and the object. However, if the camera has a scale of 1, we want the equation to be equal to the original equation. So I'll change the scale to scale minus 1. 
updating this equation shows a weird effect. The objects zoom in and out from the top left part of the screen. Therefore we need to move this to the middle of the screen. So we subtract half the dimensions of the screen to both sides. With that adjustment, the camera is all done. The objects move in the X and Y coordinates and they also scale correctly. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already.